When Germany capitulated in 1945, the Allied authorities launched an in-depth investigation into the perpetrators of war crimes during World War II. In November, Captain Lieutenant Heinz Wilhelm Eck and the four junior officers of U-852 were tried by the British at a special military tribunal in Hamburg for attacking a Greek steamer in the southern Atlantic. The skipper pleaded for operational necessity, and the second-in-command alleged he was only following orders. However, they were found guilty because of two pieces of irrefutable evidence. When the British seized the submarine, they discovered the captain's war diary, but they also unearthed a baffling machine like nothing they had ever seen before. In Jeopardy! The Kriegsmarine's Type 9D2 submarines were a considerably enlarged and special long-range version of the original Type 9s. Equipped with four bow and two stern torpedo tubes, the 87.5-meter-long and 10.2-meter-high U-852 submarine was laid down in Bremen and completed in June of 1943. Unbeknownst to the Allies, she also had a unique piece of equipment among her many gadgets. After undergoing sea trials, the Kriegsmarine dispatched the submarine for a top-secret mission. U-852 departed on her first patrol on January 18, 1944, under the command of Captain Lieutenant Heinz Wilhelm Eck, steaming for the Indian Ocean. Her objective was to assault the Allies' Far East sea lanes and obstruct their war effort in the region. To pull off the mission, however, the submarine had to lay low and not attract any attention throughout her journey on the European continent. Nevertheless, her mission was compromised within two months. On March 13th, U-852 was crossing the latitude of Freetown in the Atlantic Ocean when a lone vessel appeared. The U-boat spotted a Greek steamer, Peleus, and Captain Eck resolved to take her down. The German submarine stalked Peleus until nightfall, and when she was within range, U-852 attacked with pinpoint accuracy. The Greek vessel was hit by two torpedoes that critically damaged her, and the wreck created a considerable debris field. Reckoning that the disaster would give their position away, Eck ordered his junior officers to destroy all evidence of the encounter. Consequently, Peleus was sunk with all hands. Treasure Trove Two weeks after the intense engagement, the German submarine ran into the British cargo ship Dahomeyan off Cape Town and sank her. This time, U-852 fled the scene and did not try to hide the evidence, an action that would come back to haunt her. Before April was over, the submarine was sighted by the enemy while traveling through the Indian Ocean. She was spotted by a Vickers Wellington bomber coming from Aden in Yemen. Unable to dive after enduring severe damage from aerial depth charges, U-852 limped back to the Somalian coast. However, six Royal Air Force bombers from the 621st Squadron showed up to attack her before she could even reach land. The ongoing attack forced the German skipper to run aground on a coral reef 20 kilometers off the coast. Eck lost seven men during the engagement, and the rest fled ashore. However, 58 crew members were captured by the Somaliland Camel Corps and the local militia upon making it to Somali territory. Meanwhile, a British boarding party examined the wreckage. The Allies found X war diary, which became indisputable proof of the war crime committed against innocent Greek sailors, but also an intriguing piece of machinery. Known as a rotor or gyro kite, the rotary wing device was an unpowered aircraft that relied on lift from one or more sets of rotors to fly, and this particular model was a Fokker Achilles FA-330 Bachstelze cable-towed gyro glider. The aircraft's objective was to serve as a lookout platform, and it was a one-of-a-kind sea aircraft the British had never seen before. For all they'd seen during the war, they were still more than surprised by this unique asset in the Kriegsmarine's arsenal. Five times farther. Submarines were unable to see beyond a few miles over the ocean while submerged. However, the Germans eventually found a practical solution to this issue. 
the Admiralty took several different options into consideration. One of them was the folding Arado AR-231 seaplane, but in the end, the Foca Achilles FA-330 proved more reliable and easier to use. The single-seat kite included an assembly of three blades and could be deployed on the deck of a U-boat by two crewmen. The vehicle was a simple metal frame construction that held the seat and the mast in addition to the vertical tailplanes, landing skids, and a simplified control scheme that was handled by a stick. The airframe had no fuselage skinning, making it an ideal and cheap platform for mass production. Also, the airflow created as the ship steamed through the surface acted upon the rotors and spun them up into the air. Afterward, with an observer-slash-pilot aboard, the kite could be deployed behind the submarine and raised to an altitude of 120 meters above the vessel. Tethered to the submarine by a cable line, the autogyro kite could then be towed at a distance of 150 meters. With such an advantageous position aloft, the observer had a 360-degree view and could see much farther than the approximately five nautical miles of visibility of the crewman conning tower, surveying the sea at a range of up to 25 nautical miles, or 46 kilometers. When not in use, the rotorcraft was stowed in two watertight compartments located just aft of the conning tower. If the weather was favorable, it took no more than four minutes for the crew to assemble or disassemble the kite. However, heavier weather conditions significantly hindered the operation. Recovering the FA-330 meant winching it back to the deck and then dismantling and stowing it, a process that took about 20 minutes. But in case the U-boat captain was forced to abandon the rotor kite on the surface, the tether had to be released before sending the F-330 to the depths as if it had never existed. For all of its advantages, the clever piece of engineering could not be used very often. Allied air cover in many theaters of the war posed a considerable threat to the U-boat fleet. As a result, only the U-boats operating in the far southern region of the Atlantic and into the Indian Ocean could deploy the FA-330 without being compromised. Tactical Value Laid down in March of 1941, U-181 was another Type 9D2 submarine in service with the German fleet. Like her sister, U-852, U-181 was an enhanced version of Type 9 and had a displacement of 1,610 tons when surfaced and roughly 1,800 tons fully submerged. She was commissioned in May of 1942 under the command of Captain Lieutenant Wolfgang Lutt and attached to the 12th Flotilla not long after. Unbeknownst to the Allies, she was equipped with the unusual rotor kite. Through late 1942 and into 1943, U-181 claimed 22 ships, patrolling the waters off South Africa and Mozambique, earning her skipper a promotion and the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross with oak leaves, swords, and diamonds. Even so, only one of them was spotted, intercepted, and sunk with the aid of the gyrokite. It was the Greek steamer Eftalia Mari, which was attacked on August 6, 1943. Primarily operating in areas not overrun by patrolling enemy aircraft, and fielded operationally in small numbers, the FA-330s provided limited tactical value in the grand scheme of the war. In fact, no more than a couple hundred units were built, and they all served in Type 9 U-boats. Nevertheless, the British weren't aware of its actual reach and influence, and when they found an intact example, they studied the design thoroughly. State-of-the-art technology U-852's Captain Eck and his officers answered to justice during the Nuremberg trials after the war. They were the only Kriegsmarine submariners to be tried for war crimes perpetrated during World War II and were convicted at a British military tribunal in Hamburg for their crimes against the Peleus crew. The gyrokite found in the wreck was thoroughly studied by the British government, who conducted successful experiments towing FA-330s behind ships and jeeps. Even so, the prospect of the intriguing auto-gyro system faded away after the war ended. Innovative helicopter technology and compatibility aboard warships did not take long to overshadow any benefits of the towed model. As more adequate battlefield solutions came forward, with helicopters becoming a key component of maritime operations, the concept was forgotten. Even so, 
The Bachstelzes are currently showcased in several museums around the world. Some units can be found at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio, and the Stephen F. Udvarhazy Center in Chantilly, Virginia. Today, warships have a fixed helicopter flight deck over the stern to launch and retrieve rotary wing aircraft. Notably, the value of helicopters in military operations would not be rivaled until several decades later and into the new millennium, with the arrival of a concept Nazi engineers could only dream of the Unmanned Aerial Vehicle, or UAV, drone. Thank you for watching our video. Please subscribe to Dark Seas and the rest of our Dark Documentaries channels to learn more about recent history and the impressive military and technological developments that have been used in the clashes between the world's superpowers. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and click on the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. Stay tuned.